an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. Well, hello, howdy, and welcome to Better Than Fine. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall. And today's episode came out of a conversation around about a month ago. Uh, my friend, Rich, uh, Rich family, friend of the show, friend of the pod. Uh, Rich and I were on the phone. We we're talking about like the fitness industry and the wellness industry and kind of that whole situation. And he asked me this question. He says, uh, is wellness the new fitness and I thought he was making fun of me. I thought he was being sarcastic. And he's like, no, no, I've been hearing this around lately, like industry insider vibes, like wellness is the new fitness. And he genuinely wanted to know my opinion. And I, I didn't really at the time know what to say. Uh, so I thought about it for a while and he and I kind of chopped it up and he's like, you should do an episode on this. I'm like, should I? Uh, so by listener request, this question is wellness the new fitness? And I'm going to caveat everything in this conversation with the statement that I hate these kinds of sentiments. I hate, like perfect example, sitting is the new smoking. Is it? Is it really? Because they're, yeah, they're both not great for you, but they're completely different mechanisms of action. One of them I can change by like, I don't know, going for a walk. And the other one is a chemical addiction. They do totally different stuff to the body. So like, is sitting really the new smoking? Is it really? The other one like that always like gets under my skin is health is the new wealth. Like it's classist, it's privilegy. If you're in a society that doesn't have universal health care, it's really a messed up thing to say. Uh, yeah, like it's gross. So generally when people say sentiments like this to me, I kind of have like a, a visceral recoil, but I leaned into this idea is wellness, the new fitness. And what does that question even mean? So that's what we're going to dive into today. Let's get to it. But let's start by getting clear on the question. Is wellness the new fitness? What's that question really asking? And when I, you know, meditated on this, I came up with two viable things of what I think this question might be asking. The first is the well, the fitness industry and the wellness industry, but, but, but the fitness industry is really a fad driven industry, right? Not completely, but underneath many of the things that we, the, we're selling in magazines, we're seeing on Instagram, it's fads. And so the first thing that I think of when I think about this question is, is wellness just a fitness fad? So uh, questions about fads to me are questions about money. And, you know, it makes sense if you're thinking about fitness and fads to be like, yeah, well, wellness is a pretty big industry. But McKinsey evaluated the, the wellness industry at $1.3 trillion globally and continuing to grow. So it's not really a fad. It's actually like a really established industry. It's a big space. Or maybe the question is asking, is the fitness industry evolving to become more like wellness? And I think if we're going to talk about where the fitness industry is going, it helps to talk about where the fitness industry has been. So how do we, how do we get here? Here's a little fitness industry history. And if you think about it far enough, if we go back far enough, the first personal trainers were going to be people that you'd see in the gym and you'd be like, yeah, I, I want to, I want to do what those people are doing. And I'll, honestly, I know plenty of trainers who get business this way. They work out, they work out consistently at times they want to fill and people will approach them like, Hey, I see you're doing that thing. You look really good. Can you teach me how? 
So if the first trainer started that way, eventually you know, gyms are getting more and more established. You've got more and more people around getting paid to show other people what to do. Now, if you know anything about fitness history, Jack Lane, starting in the 50s, he's establishing the science of training and eventually pushed to get more and more personal training certifications. So then by the 80s, being a fitness professional was like a thing. And by the 2000s, it's like a legit career path. Now, along with that, I think, you know, having worked in the fitness space for a decade, that trainers, practitioners, like people who work with the body and work with the lifestyle, we're naturally really curious. We want to have an edge to help our clients get results, to get where they're going. So you start with movement. Well, nutrition's a really logical next step, right? Like that kind of evolved right along with the, the movement piece, the personal training piece has been, what am I going to have my clients eat? Or what am I going to eat to really optimize my outcomes? And if you've been in the industry for a little while, you probably know that somewhere along the way, you know, this foam roller started showing up in the gym. Maybe you got your like, certification and self myofascial release. Then we got the massage guns, right? So we started working on the recovery, the regeneration aspect of it. Now, you probably also, if you've worked in a gym or have been to a gym along the lines, you're going to have yoga, you're going to have mindfulness, you're going to have breathing, meditation, mindset work. So the scope of what it meant to be a fitness professional has been creeping out and out and out along the way. So at what point is it no longer fitness, right? If we keep evolving these skill sets the way that we are, is there a threshold at which you are outside of the scope of what it means to be a fitness professional? So let's, let's take that one step further. So the Oxford Dictionary defines fitness as the condition of being physically fit and healthy. So generally people think of fitness as gyms, trainers, exercise classes, probably nutrition, and typically it's outcome oriented, right? I want to get to that condition. I am seeking that thing. Now in contrast, NASM as part of the certified wellness coaching course defines wellness as the process of mental, physical, and emotional betterment of life. Now, fitness is obviously a subcomponent of that, right? It's related, but it's not the whole enchilada. So you're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall, and we're parsing out this question. Is wellness the new fitness? What does that even mean? Well, I like to think of it like this, this nesting like Russian doll of wellness and fitness. You could have somebody who has really worked on their physique right? They got, they got a, an aesthetically pleasing body, but maybe they got horrible sleep. They stay up all night playing video games, messing around and disaster scrolling on their phone. This person is probably young enough that that's not a huge problem for them to function in their adult life, but they could look great and still be kind of garbage in how they take care of themselves outside of just the realms of fitness. Or maybe you've got somebody who has an excellent marathon time, but their life is really out of balance and they secretly actually don't really like running all that much. It's just a thing they feel like they have to do. Or maybe you've got somebody who compulsively exercises. They're training four or five times a week. They're getting up at 5.30 in the morning, sleeping four hours a night just to get to the gym, to get that workout in before they go to their super grindy job. And then after work, they just drink all the time. All of these people are people who are prioritizing fitness, but sacrificing wellness. And there are definitely plenty of people like that out in the world. But I don't actually think after a decade of doing this, that it's most people. I think most people are striving to take care of themselves because they want to feel good and look good and find some kind of balance for themselves in their lives. So what if the goal is optimal wellness? Or what if we take that one step even further? What if it's well-being? What if you've got somebody who it's not about looking good, it's about 
feeling good and being good and being aligned in who they are? What if you don't want to exercise? Could movement be a subcomponent of that? Would that would that really do the trick? And who do you even go to to dial this all in? Would be some kind of like self-helpy person? Is it a life coach? So who do you go to if wellness is the new fitness? Are you going to go to a gym for that? How do we fill this space? Because what I've seen in this last decade in the fitness industry has been this scope creep from, okay, I, I'm a baby trainer. I program my clients. We talk about nutrition, but okay, now I've got like some certification in nutrition. So we can talk about nutrition too. And it continues to grow and grow. But I remember as a baby trainer teaching my clients how to meditate and my fitness manager thought I was crazy. She thought I was so far out of scope and I could see it in her eyes. She wanted to tell me not to do it, but she didn't know enough about meditation to know if it was outside of my job description, which I think is hilarious now. But that creeping scope, where's the line? And how do you actually sew it all together in a way that makes sense if you're trying to help somebody? And are gyms going to start paying us to talk to clients about meditation? How does this work? What does this look like? There's a lot of questions in my mind as I circle around these ideas of the balance of wellness and fitness. So there's two quotes that have felt really meaningful to me as I've been chewing this, marinating it in my mind. So the first is from Teach Nhat Hanh, who is a monk uh, and a spiritual teacher who passed, unfortunately, earlier this year. Uh, and the quote goes like this. Keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, the clouds, everything. And it resonates to me because I feel like the act of caring for oneself is about so much more than yourself. I'm going to get a little philosophical for a second, so, so ride with me here. Your body is nesting levels of systems. So if we start like way down at the cellular level, like a cell is made up of all these little components of a cell that then make up a cell, right? And then all of your cells together would make up like a tissue, like a muscle is a tissue. So then those tissues together make up organs and organ systems. And then all your organ systems together make up this thing that we call a body. But my body is part of well, my marriage, my household, my family, and then those families make up my community. And it resonates out from there until you could make the argument that we can go from cellular systems all the way up to, I oh don't know, the solar system, the galaxy. And yes, that's big existential projection here. But my point is that you are so much more than you. And when we're talking about fitness, we're talking about just you know, taking care of your body. But when we're talking about wellness, we're talking about a holistic system of a person that is integrated into all these other systems. You know, when I teach my self-care workshops, one of the things I teach, I tell this story about, you know, my early 20s. I was an actor. I treated my body like a rental car. But somewhere along the way, I had this great epiphany that... I am my grandmother's like special person, you know, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers from Mr. Rogers neighborhood used to talk about like every kid has the adult that really gets them or really vibes with them. My grandmother's that person for me. And when I was treating my body like a rental car, I was poorly treating something that she loves, which is me. And if my grandmother had ever given me anything else to take care of other than myself that she loved that much, I would have treated it like it was so precious but I didn't do that to myself. I think one major component of wellness is that how we treat ourselves affects everything that cares about and loves us. And the process of wellness respects that integration in a way that supports the person going through that process to be better and more whole and more complete than they were than they started. And in my experience in fitness, that is not always the case. So the second quote, so I promise you there were two quotes. The second one, way, way more direct, way less woo-woo and esoteric, is uh, from Jim Rohn, who is an entrepreneur. He was one of those, like, when you think of an inspirational speaker, he was one of those, like, 
quintessential inspirational speakers. And the quote goes like this, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live, right? Pretty straightforward. To me, that's the one that speaks to fitness. Fitness is part of wellness, but it ain't the whole shebang and everything you're ever going to accomplish, everything that will ever happen to you, every idea, every gift you'll ever give, anything you ever contribute comes through your body. So fitness and the health of that body isn't only relevant, it's paramount. So it has to be part of the equation. It's just not the whole story. So if we look at the whole story, if we're looking at this bigger picture, that's physical and mental health, mindset, spiritual, psychological, emotional well-being, it's career, it's relationship, it's the drive for well-being, it is pleasure and meaning and purpose, all that good stuff. That's that big enchilada of wellness. You're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall, and we are talking about, is wellness the new fitness? Is it? Because clearly they're different. We can agree that they're different. But it comes back to, is wellness just a fitness fad or is this wellness, or is it, excuse me, is the fitness industry growing to be more wellnessy? I think, I think you might agree after that great unpacking. Wellness is not just some fitness fad, but are you really going to go to the gym for a meditation class? Are you going to go to the gym to learn how to seek joy and meaning and purpose in your life? Maybe, maybe. I mean, if the gyms were offering it and you knew that that's where you would go for that. So I'm pondering this question. I was thinking about like, okay, it comes out. My, my instinct was it comes down to the practitioner, right? Like if I am a practitioner, I got to think about like, what do I want to offer the world? I'm putting that offer out there. If I'm packaging it well and communicating it well, or it comes down to the gyms, right? The gyms, the, the places we go to make fitness would have to shift their offerings. And so I shared this with my my husband, Matt, who's been a trainer for 20 years. Uh, and you know, I'm packing my whole argument. I'm getting super passionate. He goes, babe, it, it's the customers. It's about the clients. And it was one of those great duh moments. So, you know, after 20 years, he kind of, he kind of walked me through this. That in his two decades in fitness, he has seen this evolution where the clients, the gym goers, the, the, you know, the people seeking fitness have become more savvy, more aware. You know, it's 20 years of fitness fads moving from, you know, leotards and dance classes and this gender separation between cardio and strength. And it's extreme fitness movements and the cabbage soup diet and all of these different ways where people begin to realize what did and did not work. The internet has certainly helped with all of that. But what he also talked about was this developing mindfulness that he has seen in the, the fitness going public where you're more and more aware of yourself in the space and what you could do and what you should do and your foam rolling and your TRX and but what people struggle with now is integration with like sifting through all the information to decide what's going to be the best thing for them in this moment in their life. So knowing a lot as the average person, but not really necessarily knowing how to stitch it all together. And his point was that that person is looking for so much more than fitness. And I think that the pandemic years accelerated that. It gave people an opportunity to unplug from their normal lives, really sift through and look at what is not working, what has been nonsense, what was I doing just because I was obligated to. And that includes wanting to figure out how to actually align and how they care for themselves. And so there are a lot of people who are maybe considering evolving from fitness into wellness. And I think a lot of practitioners have started to see that shift as well. If you're listening to Better Than Fine, I'm Darlene Marshall. We're talking about whether or not wellness is the new fitness. And this is where really I've settled on the, on the question. So the fitness industry isn't going anywhere. 
184.6 million global gym goers and 64 million of them are Americans with a gym membership. And even though we saw a fair amount of gyms close in the pandemic, we've seen this huge burst of virtual personal training and virtual group fitness. Like you've got more offerings than ever, even if you don't go to a gym. Global virtual fitness is expected to reach 59 billion with a B dollars in 20 by 2027. So fitness and wellness are different. They have to be. But for years, I have been hearing this undercurrent in the fitness industry of like, it's a lifestyle. Fitness is a lifestyle. I'm going to, I'm not on a diet. It's a lifestyle change. But there are so many factors outside of the scope of fitness that build a lifestyle. It is so much more than that. And the fitness industry is very good at telling people what to do, right? So how many reps, how many sets, how much rest, what your macros are, your target heart rate zones, how long your recovery should be, how many days off a week, like prescription. Fitness industry is excellent at that. But lifestyles don't work that way. Each of us is the expert on our own lives. And building lasting wellness comes from receiving good information, then figuring out how you use it for you in your life, and then resolving any underlying you know, limiting beliefs, ambivalence, conflict within oneself and one's environment so that you can execute on that good information. That's not the same as being told what to do. So wellness can't be the new fitness because it is something else entirely with its own scope, its own tools, its own potential, its own practices. But this is what I would love to see. This is, this is where I settled on this question. Okay, Rich, I hope you're listening. I want to see fitness evolve into the better version of itself using the knowledge and the tools that wellness brings to the table to do fitness even better. Fitness stays fitness, but fitness is its best self. So better application, meeting people where they are, learning how to talk to people in a way that respects their autonomy, their self-efficacy, that builds resilience and doesn't will them down. So better application, better integration. How do you support someone to take all of the great tools that we give them and integrate them into their sense of self, their sense of community, their lifestyle, their family with a whole self approach? So we've got better application, better integration, and the big one, the one that's close to my heart and soul and far from my Instagram feed. Less shame, less blame, less fear, less angst, less othering, less idealizing of what a fit body should look like, less of all of that. Because what those things actually do is cause stress and resistance. They tank outcomes and they make people feel crappy and like this isn't for them. So no, wellness is not the new fitness. Wellness is already there. She is holding her own at 1.3 trillion and rapidly growing. Wellness is the key. But if fitness wants to come over and play, we got some real good toys and she is welcome to play. So let's leave it there. You, if you are a fan of the show, I would love, love, love to hear from you. So you can find me on Instagram. I'm darlene.coach. Shoot me a DM. You can join me on LinkedIn. Don't be afraid. Reach on out. If you love the show and you would like to subscribe, don't so you don't miss an episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe, that like, that comment. And if you want to support the show, leave us a review on whatever podcasting platform you are listening on. This is Better Than Fine on the NASM Podcasting Network. And thank you. <laughs>